Hello everyone, so welcome back to Project Pro YouTube channel and in today's video we will be talking about the complete roadmap to become a Azure Data Engineer. So first of all who don't know about the Azure, so this is the cloud platform which is provided by the Microsoft and nowadays we all know how these different cloud providers like AWS, Azure, GCP are dominating the tech world. And this is the main reason most of the companies are even shifting to the cloud platforms and that is because of the big data part as well. And they are actually bringing a lot of new powerful services which help us to create the cloud agnostic data pipelines. And nowadays, as I said, most of the companies are on the cloud platform. So demand of Azure Data Engineer has also increased a lot in the industry. So if you are a complete beginner, in the data engineering and want to start with the Azure platform. So this is the roadmap you can definitely follow. I will be talking about the important aspect which you need to cover as a data engineer and that would be common for everyone. And after that, what all important services you need to cover under the Azure cloud platform. So first part in the Azure data engineering journey, you should have a really good command on any of the programming language, Python, Scala, Java, anything you can pick. Python is definitely is in really good demand in the industry. So this is something which you can start with. Next is the exploratory data analysis. So when we talk about the Python, that is actually the language of data. And it also provides a very, very rich support with different, different libraries, which we can use for the typical data analysis like pandas, numpy and matplotlib. Next is the data structures and algorithm part. So being a data engineer, we definitely code, we need to write the custom codes for sure. And when we target the good product based companies, this part becomes also very much important. But the beauty of the data engineering profile is that you do not need to be a pro coder. Even if your level for the typical DSA is around easy, easy, medium till medium, you are good to go. So here, these are the topics you can focus. Typically Python related data structures, list, tuple, dictionary, ordered dictionary set etc then arrays string searching sorting and dynamic programming basics next is the linux commands and shell scripting so even not in the data engineering but in typical modern tech world right most of the time being an engineer will be working on the server side we need to interact with it we need to code we need to automate the things there so you have to be really good at it how to use the linux kind of system how to uh, use different commands from the terminal and also the shell scripting part next uh, the very much important these two sections right which is the heart of any of the data professional be it the data scientist data engineer data analyst dbms concepts right here we need to touch upon like the transactional databases asset properties what are the transactions concurrency control er diagram indexing data normalization integrity constraints ddl dml dql dcl right so these are the typical dbms concepts which even we have covered during our college time if you if you belong to the cs or it background so data is all about the databases as well first of all so we have a re we should have a really really good expertise on that then the sql part let's say we know about the data and nowadays we have heard a lot about different terminologies like data warehousing no sql databases which actually holds the huge amount of data. So how to query it? Basically, whatever data is residing into the system, how we can get the meaningful insight out of it, that can be done with the help of some query language. And this is the part where SQL plays a very important role. So these are the topics you need to cover all type of joins. You should have a really good idea. Cross, inner, left, right, full outer, then where clause, order by clause, group by and having clause case when statement case when statement with group by sub queries nested sub queries then the operations like in not in any all exist not exist aggregation and date related functions common table expression window functions very very important right so these are the typical topics which you need to cover under the sql part now coming back to the fundamentals of big data so this is the part where we need to start understanding how big data works because you are completely new into it so you should have a really good idea about the fundamentals how big data works what are the five v's of it distributed computation storage hadoop it's working architecture and component these three things 
cluster, community hardware, different file formats like JSON, ORC, Parquet, Avro, types of data, structured, semi-structured, unstructured. Now when we talk about the big data fundamentals, we should know what kind of frameworks we can actually work, what kind of frameworks we can actually use in order to do different kind of data processing in the big data. So first is framework related to batch data processing. So Apache Spark is uh, really important and has become the mandatory skill set for the data engineers. So here you can cover the Spark Core, Spark SQL. Now when we talk about the real-time data streaming frameworks, so here you can focus on the Spark structured streaming and Apache Flink. Those are really powerful when it comes to the real-time data streaming. Next, workflow managers. So let's say we have created our data pipelines. So when it comes to the complex and sophisticated data pipelines, there will be lots of dependencies of one pipeline to another. We need to schedule them. We need to orchestrate them. So we need these kinds of frameworks as well. So Apache Airflow, Asgaban, very popular in the industry when it comes to the orchestration part. Next, uh, the things which will be a really, really good plus uh, for you uh, if you are starting with the data engineering journey, you must know the CI, CD related stuff. So like GitHub, GitHub Actions, Jenkins, Spinnaker, Docker, Kubernetes. These are the things which overall help us to create these kind of data pipelines and these are the industry norms so as a data engineer we should definitely have a good understanding of it next is the messaging queues so when it comes to the real-time data streaming pipelines uh, apache kafka right has no competitor so apache kafka definitely very very powerful when it comes to the open source frameworks and also the enterprise level uh, organizations which are providing the managed solution on top of apache kafka so it's very powerful when it comes to the streaming application. So we should have a really good idea. Now the main part, which is Azure cloud, because as an Azure data engineer, this would be the main uh, expectation, right? The industry would expect you to have a solid expertise on the Azure cloud side. It's different services which can be used in order to build the data pipelines. So under this one, what all things you need to focus you should have a good idea about the compute service like Azure Virtual Machine, then storage service like Azure Blob, serverless computing like Azure Functions, transactional database like Azure SQL DB, no SQL DB like Azure Cosmos DB, notification services like Azure Notification Hub, streaming related service you can use that is the Azure Stream Analytics, managed ETL, right? any service which provides the complete solution to perform the ETL. So Azure Data Factory, very, very popular when it comes to the Azure Cloud. MapReduce type of framework, we have Azure HD Insight. Data Analytics Services, Azure Data Bricks, nowadays very, very popular in the industry. So this one and this one are the top most highlights of Azure Cloud Platform. Messaging queue type of service, that is Azure Service Bus. Monitoring related, logging, alerting related service, we have the Azure monitor, so we should have a really good idea about it. And then the data warehousing, which is Azure Synapse. So if you want to compare Azure Synapse with any open source data warehousing, that is like Apache Hive and enterprise level of solution is Snowflake, right? So this is the typical Azure cloud tech stack. So your main expertise should be this one for sure if you are going to start with the Azure data engineering, but these things will be common even if you start with any other cloud platform as AWS or GCP or you are you you are just a full stack data engineer who is not completely dependent on the cloud platform. So these are the common things, right? You should have uh, the idea about it without this one. Uh, this will be probably of no use, right? Because Azure cloud is just providing you those services which you can use to build the pipeline but ultimately you need to know all these things because underlying layer for all those services the Azure has building that will be these frameworks, be it Spark, Hive, Hadoop, all these things. So I hope now this complete and extensive roadmap would be really helpful for all the aspiring Azure data engineers. So do follow it, whatever I have mentioned purely based on my experience as well. So this is going to be super helpful and after going through with this roadmap, the most important part would be the practical implementation, right? The 
industry level sort of projects so that can be also done and this is actually a very tough thing to find over the internet and this is the part where project pro is going to be super helpful for your career because they have more than 270 plus solved end to end big data related projects and they are covering all of these cloud platforms so you can definitely check it out link will be in the description and i will see you guys in the next video with another amazing topic around the big data data engineering so till then just keep exploring data i'll see you soon